Um, so good morning. Um, I'm Helen Clare from JISC, which is the UK's National Research and Education Network. Um, I'm based, I'm normally home based, so this is life as usual for me up in uh, sunny rural Northumberland in the UK. And I'm keeping my camera off because uh, I do have network problems here normally. Um, before I just do a little bit of an introduction to, to myself before introducing the project in the session, but um, I am focusing on um, open science and open learning in, in that context and the European Open Science Cloud. So while I'm doing my short intro, I'd appreciate if others might uh, give a little bit of background about whether you have any sort of knowledge or experience in the sort of the open science, open access area. Um, in terms of my background, um, I do have a background in training for a number of years in learning technologies and libraries in particular. Um, I worked as a JISC service um, called NetSkills for, for a long time, some of you may remember that, and I was around for the early days of VLEs, training lots of institutions and the basics of their platforms and good e-learning practice. I've also attended uh, OER and OER 11 and OER 15. But the last five years of my career, I've been very much focused on scholarly communications and open access. It's interesting to follow a presentation on policy because that's been my life for the last year, five years, helping institutions comply to open access policies and the complexities there. Uh, but in the last six months, I've been working on a European funded project called EOS Synergy. And this brings me back into the world of online learning again. So that's the reason I'm here. We're in early days of the project, and I'd love to get feedback from you all. Um, from, because from what I'm seeing, that there isn't too much of an overlap between the communities, the open science communities and the open education communities. Please correct me. I do see a handful of familiar names in the chat panel. Um, so it'd be good to hear from you too. So I'm just going to do a bit of a, a background to open science and then get into the project, what it's doing and what I want from you at <laughs> the session. Uh, so in terms of open science, um, lots of different definitions around um, open science itself is quite a controversial term because it's not inclusive. A lot of people feel it's not inclusive in terms of discipline, It's not just about science. So in the UK, open research is preferred. Um, not all definitions, such as the one in the slide that I've included there, include OER. Um, many are focused on the research life cycle. I guess the key point is that it's about opening up the whole research process. Um, so opening up um, the ideas generation, the peer review, um, the actual um, working data, and then the outputs at the end. So in terms of the European Open Science Cloud, um, this is a very, very ambitious initiative, um, which started in around 2015, which is enabling the opening up of the whole research process. As, as it says on the slide, you can see various different aspects of this and, and motivations for doing it. But the idea is, is um, keeping, enabling the research data to be opened up. But I should say that it is um, quite broad in its interpretation of open science, as I said earlier, and uh, broad in its in interpretation of what we mean by data. So it can be all sorts of different outputs, including publications um, um, and multimedia. My first introduction to the word, uh, to the European Open Science Cloud, I was told that it's, it's not just U European, it's not just open, it's not science, and it's not just a cloud. So um, and I, you, you sort of, Here's explanations of those various um, aspects as we go through uh, the presentation. But it is an ambitious initiative, and um, at its core of all the activities are its values, which you can see outlined on the slide there. And again, I think a lot of those will be very familiar to this community. Um, some that might not be as familiar are the idea of um, fair um, or close where necessary. So we very much talk about FAIR in the open science community, so it's findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. So some data cannot be open because there are legal reasons and ethical reasons why it can't. Um, and also the, um, another term there that may not be so familiar around long tail research. So it's not just about big data those that produce a lot of data that may be well structured, but most researchers produce some kind of data in some format um, and that's the, the small data. 
So in terms of this, what EOSC is an ambitious project um, in lots of different ways in terms of the technical infrastructure. But the part that I'm most interested in is on the skills side of things. Um, so there are challenges around skills and around culture. Uh, this report in the early days of EOSC identified 10 challenges with three of them around the skills area. So there's a shortage of data experts. There are barriers to um, developing skills. A lot of those may be around the reward structure. So it's focused on articles and not necessarily data publishing and reuse. And there's a lack of, of intermediaries um, to, to support researchers. So there have been a lot of initiatives over the years um, and continue to be initiatives focused on skills. So I'm just going to explain a little bit about EOSC Synergy, which is the project I'm working on now. It started back in September, so we we're only six months into it. And it's defined as one of um, EOSC's regional projects, i.e. it's about integrating um, the various data and services provided in, in different nations into EOSC, um, and then also integrating EOSC back into the national infrastructures within those nations. So it is about embedding and it's about sustainability. Now, Synergy um, has a wide range of different activities, and some of them are, like I say, about bringing data services um, and data and services on board. So we have um, a whole range of interesting topics such as entomology, ethnoarchaeology. Um, we've got geological data, um, data from the Latin American giant observatory, and then services layered on top of those in terms of um, things like earth sciences, uh, climate, genetics. And you can see that the news story from just this week uh, around some work we're doing to open up research and provide services to analyze those research um, around COVID. So um, in terms of what we're doing, I'm in work package six, which is around training and skills for, for EOSC. And we're there to support um, integrating, as I say, integrating training into services where they're trying to improve usage of EOSC and develop um, EOSC related skills. So those could be around implementation of FAIR or research data management or a wide range of, of different skills that have been defined. Um, we're also looking to develop a learning platform, an open learning platform, if one is needed um, for those that don't have one. And we do have a particular focus on online delivery. So we're not looking at face-to-face -face delivery models, we're looking at online delivery and we're supporting a train the trainer model again because we want to be sustainable, we want to support those who are creating content in how to create content um, to support EOSC and related skills. And then finally, our finally, final element is around embedding um, this into national um, institutions and national infrastructures. So that's the, the background. What have I done so far on my particular task? So I'm leading a task around um, developing methodology. So how do we create good practice in developing content and how do we support others in creating that? Um, what I've been doing particularly so far is talking to an awful lot of people. There are a lot of initiatives, um, so many logos on the slide there from the Carpentries, Open Science MOOC, Digital Curation Centre, uh, Foster, a lot of initiatives in the open science training area. So we've reviewed those to make sure that we build what's there and don't duplicate. Um, we've also reviewed open learning platforms and um, looked at current online learning trends, partly because I've been a little bit out of this for a while. So I needed to refresh um, my um, memory on, on a lot of areas. And then we've done some initial se selection of platforms based on the EOSC values. So in terms of, of what we found, um, a lot of this on this slide will be very familiar to this audience, I think. Um, as I say, I wanted to, to sort of make sure that the project team were, were, um, were coming from a common understanding of um, the trends in online learning, and particularly around the word MOOC, because in our project proposal, we had MOOCs, we had the word MOOC mentioned an awful lot, and I wasn't convinced that that's actually what we were planning to produce, and I don't think we are. We will. That will be one of the range of, of, of approaches that we will support, but we're not just talking about MOOCs here. 
Um, but key points for us really were that that it's we've moved away from a single monolithic platform as I used to train in the early days of, of VLEs. And we're now talking about a suite of tools um, used for specific purposes and bringing them together. So the interoperability and the underpinning standards um, are important. Um, in terms of our observations from our reviews of those many initiatives, um, we found that uh, there are common uh, approaches within each of them. Though most of these initiatives took a train the trainer approach, but this was mainly for face to face delivery. So lots around boot camps um, and uh, workshop sessions. Uh, yes, I do see that. Yes, Libra uh, Gemma is definitely a partner that we're working with. I've just seen that in the chat. Um, many sites had collections of training materials, so attempting to sort of have um, catalogues. And when you looked into them, these were usually PowerPoints or resources from face to face workshops. Um, and then finally, there were training communities, so a great sort of um, you know, communities developing in different areas. Um, in terms of online delivery, we found that there is not much focus on structured online delivery, so content, um, you know, content structured in, in the way that you would in a MOOC. It tended to be around, sort of as I said earlier, sharing PowerPoints, workshop resources. There were some webinars, however. In terms of um, platforms, Moodle was a dominant platform used by these projects and initiatives, and in terms of the features used within those platforms, it tends to be a, a fairly standard set, so content sequencing, basic assessment, certification, media and communication channels. But talking to some of the projects, it was quite interesting how, how the different tools were used. So, for example, the Open Science MOOC, uh, they tended to use um, the LMS was really just a, a, a presentation layer. You know, they developed their content in GitHub, um, they talked in Slack, they shared videos on the Internet Archive. So it was really just using presentation and for some basic assessment. So what did all this mean for Synergy? Um, well, our train the trainer approach for online learning particularly, we felt was still needed. We felt that many of the initiatives were tied to a subject community and that we could fill a gap for those that weren't part of a community. And in our review of platforms, we came up with a, a short list of a selection that, that matched our EOSC values, and I believe they do match some of what's been mentioned in the chat there. Um, in terms of the project initiatives, Foster and Up to You, uh, the latter in particular, very much along the lines of what we're thinking and very much um, matches EOSC's approach of sort of federating platforms. Um, so I'd recommend if you haven't come across Up to You, taking a look at what they do. And it also turned out that they happen to be based out of uh, the Poznan Com um, Computing Centre, which is uh, where our work package leader is based. And we did also find that um, there was still a need for an open learning platform. Uh, the Open Science MOOC, um, during the lifetime of this project, found that they their platform had actually gone bust, the platform that they were relying on. So they were looking at a new host. So we've been focusing um, on online learning, and this is where we plan to go. We plan to do more user needs analysis, develop use cases, personas. I plan to develop the content of the Train the Trainer program. We plan to look beyond the open science initiatives into other relevant contexts. So in terms of online delivery, so computing, data science, teaching. And we plan to look at that platform. So a very agile approach, looking at the tool stack that we wanted and the standards um, and metadata that, that needed to underpin that. So that's what we planned to be doing. But obviously, um, recent developments have somewhat overtaken us. Everyone is now online. Everyone is sharing tips and good practice. Sorry. So, hi. Am I Sorry, there? just to let you know, um, you're now in the final. No, no, you've, yep. um, you've got a few minutes left, really just, so it's very much yes. just, uh, just a heads up. Okay, thank you. So yeah, so yeah, so those initiatives that we saw previously that hadn't been doing a lot to support teaching online have now started to do it. So for example, the Carpentries, everyone is sharing tips and good practice. And um, it seems everyone who didn't have a platform before now has some kind of platform. Um, for example, again, back to up to you, they've now, uh, they're now supporting the whole of the P Polish school system. And they are, um, Voltum opened up their platform and providing this open up to you platform. 
So what should we do now? Um, well, we'll continue with the agile approach for, for platforms and we'll carry on focusing on that interoperability and the use of content. Um, in terms of what I plan to do, um, I didn't feel that, the, that this was a good time to start sharing more tips um, because it, there's so much out there and, and we're bordering on overload. So what I thought I could do is actually just start talking to people, start gathering stories, particularly from that open science context and learning from those. And it was interesting in the introduction yesterday that Francis Bell highlighted this at this point exactly. We should just tell our stories and work out the significance later. And we're not the only one doing that. Um, we were actually approached last week by an organization called Force 11, who are a global communications organization to coordinate a global initiative to do this, capture these online learning stories in the open science context and learn from them. We can also look beyond that emergency delivery, obviously the longer term impacts of the change and what they mean for the open science community. So we're at the end really. Um, and what I wanted to know really from you um, is to know what you thought of, of everything that we've been doing. Um, again, trying to join up the community, there's a lot of expertise in the open education community that we can learn from. Where can we add value? Um, do we still need open learning platforms? Is that something that would be useful? Uh, what can we learn from the OER community? And, and I saw a quote from uh, Donna Lang Clark this morning, which I thought was really interesting, is that it's a kind of assumption that we, we're all going to go online and, and that's that. But um, actually, you know, we may, it may not be so straightforward. There may be more uh, consequences of this that, than we currently realise. So I'd love to hear your comments, suggestions, questions, um, either in the chat or please get in touch afterwards. Anyone listening to the recording, uh, the same goes for you too. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much, Helen. Um, do we have any quick questions uh, for Helen before we um, round off this session? Just having um, a look at the chat. I can't see any um, explicit questions. Lots of um, useful interaction and comments there for you, Helen, that um, you might like to kind of have a look through um, within the recording. Yeah, we'll do. Um, Juliana's uh, got her um, her hand up. Um, are you happy for me to to hand over a, a mic quickly, just for? Yeah, sure. um, we do have um, one minute. Okay. Um, excellent, excellent presentation. Very much needed. Uh, this review of platforms and aggregation, and also uh, showing. I, I was engaged in the MOOC, uh, MOOC si open science open science MOOC. And, and I know it's quite original the approach. Uh, and and one thing is uh, I work on the extraction of uh, one five uh, hundred one thousand five hundred cases and and almost two millions of cases uh, of uh, um, a fixture and research gate about the quality and the practices of open data uh, and and there is there are very low skills and awareness in the research community so I think we'll see the impact of your project in the long way uh, um, and and we need very much to analyze that impact because by now we have the tools we have the policy context but the researchers uh, this extraction extraction was done uh, recently last year in and the practices are not advancing yet so how do you see the possibility of uh, analyzing the impact and engagement and practices further. Okay, thank you. Is this in terms of the current context or, or in general? Uh, relating, for example, uh, open data, because it's one of the most important practices within the context of open science, but other, uh, for example, uh, crowd science, responsible research and innovation. Uh, are you planning to analyze the impact of training over researcher skills? Because as, as far as it is my understanding, these are very low. Yes, I think, I think I mean, I'm, as part of this project, I've become involved in some um, sort of European wide training um, communities. And I think evaluating the training is, is, is a key part. I think, yes, we want to do it, but I think 
it's, it's back to sort of those the difficulty sometimes of of capturing that data um, but I certainly take that question back back to the communities that I work with and and ask what they're planning to do we we obviously need to look at that in terms of our project and how we will um, you know assess the impact of, of, of our particular training Brilliant. Thank you so much, Helen. Thank you um, for the question, Juliana. Um, I'm going to have to close uh, the session now um, because we need to set up for our next session um, in this room, which will be starting um, at 12.15. Um, I just want to